The following interview was conducted with Lawrence and Catherine Boychek for the Purdue University Oral History Project. It takes place on September 23rd at Purdue University. The interviewer is Stephanie Schmitz, archivist. So, thanks for participating today. And can you each tell me what year you graduated? 1996. And I am a three-time graduate. I got my undergraduate degree in 96, my master's in 99, and my Ph.D. in 2004. Wow. Different really? areas, but uh, I loved Purdue so much, I stayed yes, for all yes, three degrees. Nice. <laughs> and what did you each study? I was at Craner School of Management uh-huh. and then studied accounting. My bachelor's was in health and kinesiology, and then uh, my Ph.D. was from consumer and family sciences and child development and family studies, and my master's was in infant motor development through kinesiology. HKLS is what it used to be called. Now it's under health and human services. And did you happen to meet here on We did. We met in the fall of our sophomore years. So in 1993, August of 1993, we met. Were you both sophomores? Yes. And um, what did it happen to be at a football game that you met? <laughs> <laughs> it happened to be at a fraternity party. Is that the guy? <laughs> so you. But our first date was at a football game at, at, uh, at when nine eleven. Ironically, that's oh before nine eleven had significant meaning. But uh-huh. I just remember, September like, 11. and you know, first date was was nine eleven of yeah. ninety three. <laughs> So that's why I always remember our, our, our first official date because afterwards, you know, 9-11 had such significance and we love to go to football games together. And um, so were you each involved in Greek life then? Just, uh, well, at first I was, but then uh, we just transitioned to like non Greek it's activities. so funny. We met at a fraternity party, but then after we met each other, then he didn't end up rushing and pledging, and so <laughs> I was always interested in other things. So, <laughs> What did you do for fun on campus? Uh, so we did movies, right, the student union. Um, what, just were, hung, what were you in the student union? Uh, Stuart. 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 The Peace Sub. Like, yeah. Peace Sub, yeah. They they out, the uh, Purdue Friday, Student Union board now Friday always night, have movies. Free movies. Uh-huh. Uh, just general things on campus, hung around with friends and family that also went to Purdue at the same time. And we were big with, uh, involved in the St. Tom's uh, Parish okay. on campus, so we did a lot of things like uh, with St. Tom's, yeah. like religious education and just things with the campus ministry. I was going to say, it seems like you came from different, different um, departmental backgrounds, so it's interesting when, you know... They right, and also uh, geographically different, I... Uh, was uh, from the metro Detroit area uh-huh. and heavily considered uh, University of Michigan and actually my last two choices came down to uh, Purdue and IU and, uh-huh. I, and I just chose Purdue over the warmth that uh-huh. I found here on campus. and The warmth in personality. Yes, it's very strong here at Purdue. I and I was interested in pharmacy. The pharmacy program was uh, you know, really strong here and everything and so but organic chemistry was not my strong suite so that's when I discovered the health and kinesiology I could still do the it was it was they didn't have pre-physical therapy officially I know they do now at here at Purdue but it was the, along that track that I was thinking that I was going to be a physical therapist but then once I was um, I did undergraduate research mm-hmm. and the motor control lab and that was really exciting and so uh, Howie Zelaznik encouraged me to apply for the graduate program and so then I was a teaching assistant um, and then got my master's and then went on for the Ph.D. in a, in a different area. So that's what was really exciting as an undergrad to do research. And I was also a TA, a teaching assistant through biology. They had these labs that if you did really well in the biology, you could, even as an undergrad, like teach these little lab sections that were more like recitation. And so that was a really great experience just very early on. So The unexpected directions that you mm-hmm. end up going in is one of the most joyful parts of learning, I mm-hmm. think. So to be so that now that I'm a professor, I look back and think, oh, you know, it all started when I was a junior and I had this lab expertise. I was teaching these lab sections as a junior. And a lot of places, you know, a lot of universities don't allow, like, graduate students to teach or even undergraduates. And so I think that's really great with Purdue that they give you an opportunity to refine your teaching skills early. But again, with guidance, it's not like, you know, we were just put into the, the classroom. So we had these weekly meetings that would prepare us for how to run these lab sections and it was more like a discovery there still was the professor and everything but it was more the, with the lab sections that you had the opportunities that you know no one no one else has well, the, that was the practical hands-on um and 
how often do you visit? Purdue? This is our first visit in about 10 years, but we have gone to plenty of uh, sporting events. We went out to the Rose Bowl in 2001. We've been John Purdue we've Club members been. since 96. Like when you graduate, they have your first as like a membership, and, and we're um, lifetime members of the Purdue Alumni Association, you know, since 96. So like we were vested. So it's like when she came along, you know, it was harder for us to travel here. So well, that's why this is her first trip at age five. So oh. we hope she'll be a Boilermaker someday. And what's your name? Anya, Anya Bolchek, and um, what do you think of the Purdue campus so far? What's it like? Oh, neat. <laughs> and what kind of buildings did you see? What did you? What, what buildings did you like the best? Were, oh, the oh yeah, you love the, the, the new engineering library. Yeah, she she was checking out some of the books. She was climbing up to look at the books on the shelf, the library. She you love loves the books. books in the library. Huh. Do you think you'll be a Purdue student someday? All right, we've got it on recording. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> and in coming back to Purdue after ten years, is there anything that struck um, struck you as um, distinctly? distinctly different or the same? The amount of student resources that are here on campus now are just blow, blow me away. Um, what, you know, students have access to. This, the new buildings and, you know, just, just the resources. I'm just thinking for studying. I know we had, we had places to study, but now like with the new center and stuff like that, there's like the more restaurant, it seems like there's a lot more, uh, as far as like, you know, little restaurants and cubbies to study. But as far as like the buildings still, it's like I could walk around as if it was yesterday and knew like where to find my way around. Some of the buildings were the same, but just with, the, the new construction, although there's new buildings still, like the core of the campus, like with the engineering mall and the key landmarks are the same, and so it like brings back those memories. Mm -hmm. But the students are very lucky now. We I lived on campus as an undergrad at Earhart, so all my four years, oh. and then uh, I was a grad student, I lived off campus, but I know he lived both on and off campus, so I think now it seems like the students have uh, a lot more choices than what we did, so that's yeah. nice to see how it's very modern, you know, and again with the studying areas, but then there's a Starbucks the cafes and everything. Earhart doesn't have air conditioning, or I bet it didn't back then, right? Right, it didn't have oh, air conditioning. Is this, does it still not have air conditioning? I don't know. Um, I just, I, I walk by those dorms, and I notice some of them don't have air conditioning. I had the box fans <laughs> in the window. That helped. And you both studied here in the early 90s, right? Yes. So that was like right before email came along. Yeah, we were talking about that well, just the other day. Well, we started we had like email. They had like a uh, called like green screen uh -huh. email uh -huh. uh, right in our senior year, and the internet had just come on. Uh, like the dial up kind. So, right. Yeah. right, and I remember that um, I, you know, first had an email account, but maybe I checked it once a month, and I think, oh my goodness, now, you know, like, and then when I tell my students this, I'll say, you know, when I was in school, email was just first invented, and I might check my email like once a month. They were just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, gosh. Do you feel like the pace of communication, I'm just trying to wrap my head around, what was that like? Um, if you didn't have email and you needed to get a message quickly to someone, you just used Campus phone. phones. Yeah. Campus phones. Were, we, were, we commented to the other day at the student union, they used to have these like quiet phone booths uh -huh. you'd go into and, would, and you'd just pick up and you know call a dorm room number or something like that. Nice. But you know, now, you that would be... Like so archaic. Yeah. And I mean, we had cell phones, but again, it, not, it wasn't as if we were text messaging, you know, so it's like, you know, run down the hall and go see so-and-so uh -huh. or call someone yeah. across campus. And if you needed to get in touch with one of your course instructors. Just... Office hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Yeah, Drop by true. office hours. In writing papers, did you use word processors then? Mainly word processors. Um, probably lab computers. Or we just use a lot of lab computers and then and printed things off. I remember printing things <laughs> off, like or going to the Hissy Library and then to different places to print things off. Or like in graduate school, like I know Mollenkopf had a big um, lab area for the student athletes, and because I tutored, I would do a lot of things in there. And in my dorm room, I had a word processor. 
that it could print things off. It had like a disc. Uh-huh. So, but it was huge. It was probably, you know, this big and about that high, and it was very heavy, probably about like 15 pounds. Yeah. So now you think how portable laptops are. Unbelievable. But yes, we didn't have our own laptops. Or no iPads. <laughs> yeah. And then, well, is there anything about Purdue that you think is not talked about enough? Or any traditions that you feel like everyone always forgets? Hmm, that's a good question. Traditions that people forget. I don't know. I always just think everyone, when they even people from out of town, they know the boilermaker. You know, they know the, the train, and you know the cheer. That I just remember that now they do one, two, three, four, first down. We remember when that was invented because it was during the Drew, Drew B, Breeze era, and we would go to all the away games, and we just noticed that the the students that traveled for a lot of these games during that era, they started to do that with every first down, and then it just really picked up, and so then it kind of became a tradition. So. We think the fact that you know they do that one, two, three, four, first down. Maybe they don't talk about that enough. As far as like it's not that um, you know old that it's only been maybe within the last like fifteen, twenty years that that's been done. So that's like kind of a cute thing. And how cool to be part of that tradition. Any concluding comments? Just that it's, it's great to be back, and again, like it just feels like some of it, just the chorus stayed the same, just with the Purdue spirit. I think people are very uh, friendly, even when we were in the new engineering library, you know, we, we, there was someone that was studying, and then she, she needed to sit down, like someone had left, and so then they were like, oh, she can sit here, and so they were just very warm, you know, because I know like East Coast, sometimes things are very fast-paced or whatever, but here it just seems like everybody's very friendly and willing to help, so that just that warm spirit is very nice. Midwest hospitality is still the same. Yeah. And, of course, the academic excellence. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. No, we have a strong sense that Purdue is everywhere. If we're on vacation or uh, there's reunion events in D.C., you, you just see the Purdue pride and come out. I mean, even at, like, theme parks in Florida, there's no school <laughs> Other than Purdue, that you'll see people down there. Huh. Right, so we'll wear a Purdue you know. shirt, and then we'll see people say "Boiler Up," oh you know, and do the little fist. Uh, so it's funny. We could be anywhere, and we still will get a Boiler Up. So that's huh. really that's really neat. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing your sure. memories with us.